everybody, and welcome to the Final Thoughts Podcast, episode 118. It, sure. Fuck, let's go with this. I don't know. Uh, 118, yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, I am your host, Casey. I am entirely with it today. Uh, and with me, we have... Uh, who the fuck are you guys again? I don't know. I lose track. There's him. There's Hi. the other British one. There's uh, Iowa. Hey, Senior. I was not entirely with it, so I just drank a can of Monster. And the unforgettable Kenshwa. Hi, I'm Kenshwa618, and I heard some of you bitches want to play wiffle ball. Huh? Well, just know, there's a game waiting anytime you want it, where Kenshi is. Get your wiffle ball game going. Yeah. Okay, I think I might be speaking for both me and Guy. What the fuck is wiffle ball? Um, okay. Um, uh, it's like baseball, only safe, because it's played with plastic bats and hollow plastic balls with holes in them. It's played All usually right. during... I'm, I'm game. <laughs> ...in picnic-like settings. Yeah, my biggest problem with playing, like, baseball or rounders and whatever else we played in high school was the fact I'd get hit by just about everything constantly, because I'd never see it coming. So, Yeah. I'd be okay with that. Cool. Interpodcast wiffle yeah, ball game. The ball can't go as far because it's not as aerodynamic. So it's it's better to play in like picnics and stuff. So smaller area. Hmm. Getting hit with a softball fucking hurts. I imagine it would. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> uh anyway. <clears throat> So, as usual, at the top of the podcast, we start with what we're doing. So what have we been doing? I'll go first, because I want to go first. Can I just... Can I just ask a request of the universe in general? No. But go ahead. Mr. Universe, or Miss Universe. It might be a reigning queen and king, we're not entirely sure. Either of you, any of you, could you please maybe stop killing all of our British legends? All of them at once, please? I was about to bring that up today, but... uh... Please, yeah. could you not kill any more of the awesome people that came from this country? Two in a week. <laughs> Three in two weeks. Oh, that's what? right, because Lemmy was Lemmy was last week. Yeah. Yes, he was. And then David Bowie, which I literally spent the entire evening just listening to David Bowie albums back to back when I heard that news. That that sucks. And either today or yesterday, Alan Rickman passed away. At 69 years old, he was a goddamn awesome actor. Everyone's going to say Professor Snape, Hans Gruber, whatever. I'm just thinking Metatron from Dogma. That would... He's fucking great. He was fucking great. Very sad. Hmm. And my friend listens to uh, the songs from Pretty Woman a lot. Or, no, that's the name of the song, I think. Okay. Relevance? Uh, Alan Rickman and someone else sang a song called Pretty Women. That was Pretty Women, and it was from Sweeney Todd. That's it, yeah. I think it was him and... I think it was him and... uh, Was it Johnny Depp? I think it might have been. I'll, I'll link that because it was pretty great too. But yeah, Alan Rickman sucks. David Bowie also sucks. Lemmy. Go. 2016 sucks as a year already. Like not even halfway into January and God fucking damn it. It sucks. <sighs> I heard about David Bowie at work, and my boss asked me if I knew who David Bowie was, and I was insulted. Good man. Did you actually know who David Bowie was? Or of course you just I know who David Bowie is. <laughs> uh, Damn it. I'm the only one in this podcast who knew who Lemmy was other than you. Yeah, that is also depressing, is. but for different reasons. <sighs> So 
ISA. Yes. For shame. For yeah, shame. Yeah, like it it's literally one of the most recognizable metal songs ever. Like ever. Seriously, Ace of Spades, you've never heard of Ace of Spades. Nope. Yeah. I probably know the person, I just don't know him by name like that. All right. Hmm. We anyway. We can't get into this again. <laughs> anyway. Slicer is a culturalist bastard. But beyond nope. that, uh, what else happened in my week? Uh, I had a shitty day at work because it was supposed to be snowing today. No, sunshine constantly. And I think I've mentioned before, we have massive big old bay windows in my shop, like facing westwards. So, oh. you know... For like four solid hours, I could literally see nothing. <laughs> I was effectively blind for the entirety of my shift and in pain, and it was a miserable experience. Buy some sunglasses. I was wearing sunglasses. Oh. <laughs> I like better sunglasses. Buy another pair of sunglasses and wear both of them at the same time. Slice's suggestion is more valid than guys because the sunglasses i'm wearing are like 150 pound oakley sunglasses the expensive ones that block out just about any kind of light well wear, wear welder's goggles yeah that would do it i have a feeling that would be a bit too obtrusive to working retail maybe Hey, listen, it's either, tell them it's either I wear welder's goggles or you turn this desk away from the fucking sun. It was your yeah. option. Yeah. Oh, well. So, yeah, that really sucked. But uh, it's over, so I don't have to worry about it. And it's still winter, so there's not going to be many days like that. Hopefully. 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 <clears throat> it's supposed to be snowing or something at some point, but, you know, whatever. That hasn't happened yet. Uh, aside from that, let me think. Not been playing video games. Been reading a lot of fix still, so I still have lots of fucking recommendations in in the hopper. Uh, aside from that, I haven't really done that much. I've, I've been brainstorming. Uh, one of the writers whose story I recommended message me saying, hey, thanks for the recommendation. Uh, and by the way, I'm going to add my voice to the pile saying, uh, please carry on Harry Potter Game of the Year edition. So I've been basically brainstorming ways to write something for that, only make it interesting to me. It's not been easy, yeah. but I'm having a go at it. So hopefully something comes of that in the near future. Yeah, Personally, I wouldn't try and force it if you're just writing it for other people. It's got to be something you and you enjoy. Well, that's why I'm trying to make it something interesting to me. Like, if I can't do it, I can't do it. That's just the end of it. But I'm going to have a go because someone asked me to, basically. Fair enough. Um, that's pretty much my week. Pretty simple. I hate the universe for killing people that are awesome. And I hate my job when it's really, really sunny, but the rest of the time it's pretty okay. Uh, who wants to go next? Uh, Kenshi, you go next. Okay. Um, first and foremost, uh, I did my best trying to become a billionaire this week by dropping $10 on Powerball tickets. You know, catch the fever of lotteries. Oh, yeah, I did something similar, actually. I bought uh, 20 pounds worth of uh, national lottery tickets. How well did that put cool? Uh, I won twenty five pounds, so won, broke I, even. You won <laughs> one more than I did. I got nothing. Yeah, that'll happen. So my question to you all is: If you had the equivalent of whatever the hell it is in pounds or whatever to one point five billion dollars, that would be eight hundred million cash lump sum before taxes. What would be the first thing you'd buy? Well, for one thing, the lottery in this country is not actually taxed. As far oh. as I'm aware, so, um, so will be the first thing I buy. I probably buy a house, to be honest. Some kind yeah, of yeah, that, that would be the first one. 
I definitely oh, wasn't kind of that. aircraft. <laughs> yes. You guys, are, you guys are no fun. You see, guys at least a little bit fun with his. Oh, I'm sorry. I would buy a super fast car that I could never, ever, ever, ever drive. No, that's why you want a big plane, because then there's no roads up there. You can go as fast as you want. <sighs> you that That's not how it works. That, you get yeah, a helicopter yeah. if you want to do that. And even then... Guy, can, can you fly a plane? If I've got a beginner's license. Well, provisional one. That might be out okay. of date now, actually, but I've still got it somewhere. Yeah, you guys, your ideas are all terrible. If I had that money, the first thing I'd do is I'd take a million dollars of it and just hide it in separate places all over my town. Just split it up and hide it in separate places all over my town. Then I'd buy a television spot for an ad. I would go on TV and say, hey, I'm the guy who won the lottery. I took a million dollars and hid it in a bunch of places all over the town. Go find it. And then you would promptly be arrested for inciting riots, I assume. I don't know. I don't and, know the law. And looting. The law on that is. Why would I be looting? Because people would just smash off everything in just basically saying, hey, put it somewhere. Might as well look in this TV that costs $3,000. But that's no, the I person who that. finds it going to be king of the fucking pirates? What the hell? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the beauty of it because after I do it, or before I do it, or before I put the television ad out there, I'm leaving the country, I'm going to Australia, and building my own manly empire in Australia. Why Australia? Because be it's place manly. To do it, I guess. Australia is the manliest place on earth. Everything there can kill you. I think we've been over this before. Yeah. Hmm. Thus, continued living there is manly. I suppose. But what exactly is your plan to turn it into an empire? I don't know. I got a fucking billion dollars. I'll think of something. <laughs> okay. You'll buy up a city block, is what you're saying. This is now the estate of Kenshi. Yeah, like the like the like the Kingdom of Dave or the fucking what was it? The Republic of Dave. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Like the dictatorship of Kenshi. You realize there is actually one of those somewhere in your country, right? Yeah, it's just like some guy's house that's part of another country. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's in Nevada or something. Yeah, probably. Yeah, mm -hmm. now once I got a house and a stable car, I'm pretty sure then the fun purchases would come out. Yeah, you you start off getting the things where, okay, I am now self sufficient. I don't need pretty much most of the rest of this money. So I can spend it however the fuck I want and just do shit. Probably video games. A lot of video games. I would definitely amp up my computer to like ten thousand percent. I would have a wall of like supercomputer is what I would have. Like, crazy shit that I would never actually need and probably wouldn't benefit anything that I was doing. But I'd just have it there anyway, just in case. I would, li know. I would line my house in mink and coat the light post outside gold so my house looks like a literal pimp. <laughs> nice. The windows would be stained. Anything to get the mullet house, right, Ken? Actually, I could do that with a billion you could. dollars. Yeah. You could line your entire house with fur, and it would be the mullet house. Oh, God. Think of the smell, though. Oh. That's a good point, actually. <laughs> After it rained, you just have... Well, ugh. well, you have enough money. You just Every week or so, you just get like contractors to come in and replace all the fur. <laughs> Or I could just use synthetic fur. My house would have a wig. It wouldn't be a real Yeah, fur. but that's not as fancy. It'd be a wig. A mullet house would have a wig. Is it, where do you actually get the hair from? Oh. 6,000 fur coats. A bunch of panda bears. Because <laughs> I'm rich and I can afford panda fur. Fair enough. I still think my aircraft okay. idea is the better one. Mm.
You know, if okay. you're just going to get panda fur, you may as well just get pandas. I mean, yeah, but you if you might get be able pandas, to you have to take care of them. Like, well, you would get mandated yeah. to take care of them. You could hire, but you if could you hire someone them, that for you. You basically just hire, like, poachers to kill the pandas, and then it's the poacher that's at fault, not you. What? That's not how it works. That's not how crime sure works. Sure it is. That's absolutely how it works. That's how it works in Ace Ventura. Yeah. He also climbed, climbed out of a robotic rhino's ass. So, I mean, you know. And sure, if there was a robotic rhino, then that would be entirely possible. Totally forgot what we were talking about. Yeah, I, <laughs> that would be the next thing I would do with my lottery winnings. I would like fly guy out to like some zoo or amusement park themed around a zoo and get him to try and climb out of a rhinoceros's ass. Why guy? Because it would be funnier that way. I feel like his deadpan reactions would be funnier. Ah. Oh, I might be, I guess. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> That's pretty much all I got. I haven't really done okay. anything this week. <laughs> you basically bought lottery tickets was your week. Whatever, I got like seven minutes of conversation out of you, so it worked. Fair play, fair play. Um, okay, uh, Guy, you're next. Uh, well, I got dumped this week. My girlfriend broke oh. up with me. Oh. Which was also why I managed to write two chapters over the weekend, so... Yeah. Uh, did you tell her about so the reminded. podcast? Is she ashamed you know, you? actually, she never once knew that I wrote fan fiction at all. I never told her that. But, mm. yeah. Maybe you should have told her that you're internet, internet famous to a very, very select community of people who are incredibly lame. I'm sure it would have done wonders for it, but never mind. Oh, well. Fish in the sea and all that. Nah, I don't think that's how it works. Mm. Ugh. But, yeah, that's my week. Mm. Okay. Knew it was coming, but... Uh, Slicer, rescue us, please. I should have gone with Guy and then Kenshi. Probably. So, yeah. um, anyway. it, it's been cold recently. Like, really cold. And I have to leave very early in the morning for work, usually, sometimes. Uh, so it was one of the days that I opened, so I had to wake up at 4 a.m. to get to work at 6 a.m. because it's an hour drive. Mm. And uh, I was taking the interstate, and there were a solid three miles where it was just ice. The entire road was ice, and I have a very small car. And uh, so someone had crashed in the passing lane, actually, so like half of the lane was filled up by their car. <clears throat> and so everyone slowed down, and there was a semi in front of me. And so the semi decided it would be a great idea to just slam on the brakes. And so I had to also slam on the brakes. And because my car has far less traction than his, I very nearly slammed into the back of a semi. Because mm. the guy is an idiot. Yeah. So that was fun. Mm. I actually had to, like, swerve into the other lane. So I came about a foot away from also crashing into the already crashed car. Yeah. Yeah, that was the first time. So I... the moral of that story is other people on the road are fucking stupid. That's generally the uh, belief of everyone on the road ever. So, but fair play to you about the whole first time I... guy almost first yeah. time Come I on. ever crashed my car. But yeah. Aside on motorway, there was a. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, so I, I see you're just not along, hearing, so. guy. No, I, I can hear him. It's just, it's delayed. Guy, so. go ahead. Guy, go ahead. Right, okay. So, first time I ever crashed my car on the motorway. No accident in front. Smoke coming out. And the car came crashing in, into an already one. And then I saw the accident. And I deliberately swerved. And I ended up crashing again on the other side of the road. So, that four cars crashed in the span of five minutes that, that day. Mm. I mean, little car breakdown. Okay, change my mind, Slicer, go. <laughs> Alright. And yeah, no, I can hear Guy, it just seems like it's really delayed. So, I don't yeah, okay. mean to talk over him, but, mm. yeah. Uh, aside from that, I've been working a lot, same as usual, but uh, they've, they've lowered my schedule, so now I'm working, you know, five out of seven days a week, seven to eight hour schedule. 
that, that kind of thing. It's not too bad, <laughs> but I still I'm still quitting next Monday. Just fuck that. I'm not doing that during and college. So no. As in, you stop working there next Monday, or yeah, stop working there because classes start next Tuesday. So ah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... By the way, speaking of, Slice's schedule is bullshit, so we're going to have to re- rework the fucking recording hours, which means Slice might not be on for a couple of weeks on the podcast uh, that until we w- work that out. So, Recording on Saturdays, right? Uh, yeah, but that was for the other thing, remember? Oh, okay. Remember I thought that was thing? both. You, you said that was going to be both. Not or... a chance in hell. We won't have enough time. Ah. Bear in mind, I also work Saturdays sometimes oh i see mm. all right then yeah so uh there's that and i've been hanging out with friends whenever i can so i haven't had a lot of actual free time to myself mm. and that's about it cool very... i did actually manage to watch eden of the east though so when we get to that section i'll i'll have things to talk about we're not doing that section this week <laughs> <laughs> next week do we do we pick new ones then no we're just not doing it because like half of us haven't watched theirs and Zero's not here either. So yeah. fuck it, we'll do it next time. All right. I kind of want to rework the, the section so that we just do one show for all of us rather than everyone doing separate shows. So we can actually talk about it rather than one person delivering an essay. Might be more interesting, actually. But then if there's a really bad show that we all get, it's going to be really boring for all of us. No, it's, it did just end up being all of us bitching about the one show, which has its own entertaining appeal. Yeah. Sure, that works. Um, okay, so <clears throat> that's pretty much the what we're doing section. I guess that was that was kind of quicker than usual. It's only 20 minutes. Oh, uh, So, first topic for the week is hand-waving. So, this is... Basically, the no one cares about the details, just get on with the telling story thing. Uh, the examples that we brought up would be uh, torches uh, that never go out. Like, you know, handheld fire torches rather than... In Sorry, any that's a British setting. thing. You, yeah. Sconces, too. I mean, set the ones that are just like in the walls and stuff. Yeah. Those I'm just clarifying be because... In England, torches also include the electrical torches. Oh, right, like flashlights. You call yeah. them flashlights, yeah. Anyway, so torches never go out. Candles never go out because no one wants to waste five minutes of film or a couple pages of a character going, oh, bloody candles or torches or whatever, and having to get a fresh candle or torch. That's just like candle. Unless Getting a, a fresh one, movie. putting it in place and everything. Yeah. Unless the darkness is actually significant and means something, there's literally no point to it, so they just don't bother. So the candles are basically never-ending kind of thing. Got really wrapped up in that example. Anyway, so, yeah, it's basically just brushing the details aside for the sake of actually telling the story. Uh, would... Would machines and stuff always working count as that as well? Uh, similarly, yes, I suppose. Because <clears throat> uh, my car, for instance, if it's really cold, it takes a few tries to actually start up. Mm. But you never yeah. really see anything like that in media. It's always just perfect. Use. Well, you do Unless... sometimes. You, you only see things breaking and such things when there's a meaning to it. Like... Yeah. Uh, the car takes some time to start up, not because it's a car. Sometimes that happens. It's because, oh, it's an old car, and they can't afford to replace it or get it repaired, so they just go on with the half-broken car because they're not financially viable or something. Well, that's more like narration, the, like narrative meaning in there. But I always mm. thought of Hollywood torches as being more in the setting. Like the thing which I'm thinking of is Indiana Jones. So he goes through loads of traps and all of these obstacles to get to this thing but then when he reaches the artifact there's a big gaping hole in the in the ceiling letting down sunlight which leads to the question why couldn't he have just climbed through that how did it, the artifact save preserve when there was this big hole in the ceiling 
isn't that this, they just want to dip for the light, but the Hollywood torches that, yeah, it doesn't really make sense in any sort of context. They just pushed it over. Hmm. I'm not sure what that would count as. It doesn't sound like hand waving because they don't like say, oh, he can't do that because reasons. It's more, oh, well, it is. he could have done that, but uh, I don't know. Well, no, they don't even mention it. They just push straight past it with the movie. Yeah, I suppose that'd just be like a plot hole more than anything else. I don't know. But yeah, they could like hand wave that if they really, really wanted to. And just you know, move past it because it's not important. The idea was there's just light there because dramatic it effect, makes dramatic yeah. lighting. Yeah. This is a very confused topic. It is a little bit, isn't it? Yeah. We had trouble giving this topic enough meat to it that it would actually be interesting to talk about. Uh, rather than just saying, yeah, things work because they have to work and they only don't work if there's a reason for them to not work. So what about when fan fiction offers a go the other way and they put too much detail explaining things that don't work? Which, to be honest, I'm pretty guilty about. That hmm. It can definitely that, happen. Uh, an example of that is actually tuning in exam day. It's an old one, but I mean, it's... Yeah. There are entire chapters of just world building in that, and it got really boring. Yeah, the thing about fan fiction writers, they're fans, so they know everything about everything about everything, more often than not. Like, they're big fans, big enough that they want to write more about this setting and story. So they get stuck on the details that didn't make sense to them, and they try and explain it away to make it all make sense, rather than just do what the original story did, which is to say, okay, this is a thing because this is a thing. Don't question it. And then on the other side of that, you've also got the, uh, people, the, the fans who are reading it. They also have uh, they have things that the author feels it's okay to hand wave, and the fans pick and the reviews pick up on that and criticize it for, and it get, can get very messy that way. And it's also, same problem. Yeah, it's, it's the same problem because it's fans that like the story and setting enough that they would read other fan works of people who like the setting enough to write fan works it's like an endless loop kind of thing of people like getting way 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 too invested in the story yeah that they can't let anything go ever ever uh. Ugh. <sighs> yeah mm. but the problem is that everybody has different standards on what it's okay to hand wave mm. and when standards clash people get arguments and all pages of forum threads being filled up very quickly. Mm. I don't go on forums. Yeah. Hateful places. Hateful, hateful places, those forums. Only because they don't like you for some reason. <laughs> I need to stop picking on you for that. That's not fair. Yeah. They're the ones Is that are really assholes. picking on him? I mean... Mm, not really. Um, yeah, it's, it's surprising how much hate country does have on service space battles. Actually, he's actually, successful. You looked it up, so didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fucking weird. Um, <laughs> there, there are a lot worse stories on space battles, and they don't get anywhere near as much hate. I think they're just they're jealous. on space battles. You can just ignore them. Yeah, I think that's a case of one of us, so they just get a pass. Assholes, tribalism. Fuck it. Uh. Yeah, so it's it's almost like it's a difficult balance to like indulge in enough detail that the fans are appeased that, okay, yeah, you're explaining this that was in the story and it didn't make sense. I approve. To, we don't care about any of these details. Could you just get on with telling a story, please? There's almost supposed to be a balance there, but there just kind of isn't as far as I'm concerned. Like, the people that want details and explanations about everything, they're never going to be satisfied. As far as I'm concerned, they're just going to find something to pick at. Well, pretty it's... much. But what about when, when it's the author who's the type of person who wants de extra detail explanations, who's trying to? Then they need. Sorry. You keep going. 
Keep going, guy. You're fine. Who tries to bring more? Who's trying to expand the world a little bit more and bring more? Who's make it more detail in it? Mm. And then that's basically they you... just need to find that happy balance. I mean, you can't spend all the like chapters at a time just doing that. You have to have some kind of meat to the story. Unless yeah. the entire point of the fic is just to explain things like that, which I have seen before. Yeah, those do exist, and that's fine for what those are. But if you're actually trying to tell, tell a story, you can't you can't sweat the details, basically. Yeah. You can't just get stuck on minutia of how the setting works, or you're never actually going to get anywhere. You're going to reach burnout on writing the story before you've even told the first arc of the story. Yeah. Uh, what the hell are we supposed to be talking about? And we haven't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, I'm really it's... bad for that, aren't I, on my stories? That makes me depressed now. No, you're fine, I think. Do things work? Do they get bogged down too much? Oh, because yeah. that's, kind of, that's kind of the only point. I mean, as long as things are working and you're not asking any questions that point out plot holes, you're fine. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> One could argue that you got a bit bogged down in your One Piece fic. I'm going to spoil it for a little bit. If Just going to mention it just in case people want to read it, and they should because it's a good story. Um, in the most recent arc in Water 7, you basically had a plot of they're going to have a new ship built, and it's going to be awesome, and we're going to go with all these details and stuff about how the ship's being built, and then you blew it up in one chapter. <laughs> yeah. wow. Actually, no, I'm not saying that's Andrew, but I love that. I, I wanted to do that really just to I mess think, with the I, th I think that's I think that's I think that's awesome as well. I don't see anything wrong yeah. with that as well. Yeah. <laughs> <It's hilarious. laughs> Are they gonna build a new one or is it just like gone forever? It remains to be seen because uh, you know, guy hasn't written anything for uh, it. So I, gonna... I hope it's gone forever and they make a new one and never go into the details on what's in the new one. <laughs> It's just a ship. They just keep the pulling things out of their ass. <laughs> no, it's just a ship. There's nothing really cool about it. The other one that got blown up was going to be the cool one, but now they're out of ideas. Let's... In fairness, Frankie died, so all the cool stuff that he would have built can no longer be built. So yeah, It could just be just a regular ship at this point that's just kind of big. Because yeah. they kind of need that at this point. Um, yeah, I've lost a lot of steam with nine minutes out. Oh. Anyways, we're going off topic. It's been a while. I miss that story. Me too. Yeah. Maybe you should write some of it. I can't. <laughs> okay. It's like um, trying to get you to write. Okay, fair cop. Um, <laughs> next topic. Let's move on before you get to judging me and my lack of writing. Um, right. <laughs> so, next topic is The Arch Enemy. Now, of all antagonists, this is probably one of the most common in, like, standard, you know, media works. Like, the antagonist that is perfectly opposed and never irreconcilable between the protagonist and the antagonist, the arch enemy. It just won't happen because they are just that completely opposed to each other. Batman Joker kind of thing to make an obvious comparison. It's just not done very often. Well, it's like I say, it's done pretty often in canon works if I need to find a word for it. But fan fiction tends to eschew that for the sake of either let's all be friends or. Let's kill off the arch enemy because, you know, drama. Who wants that? Um, because that's what people have been wanting for the entirety of the story. Why don't you just kill him? Being the trope. So you just end up with not having an arch enemy and you get a bunch of either rubbish antagonists or no antagonists. <laughs> and it's just a very, I, very dull story. I, I think yeah, it's. I, oh, sorry. You, you can go ahead, guy. Go on. We really do go crash. We start stalking at exactly the same time, don't we? Pretty much, yeah. You do. Yeah. 
Go on, guy. If I think a lot of fan fiction is focused more on the main character. It's a singular character that people want to write about, and they want to be good to that character. So it doesn't really lend itself well to having an arch enemy in there, because that's somebody who clashes with him and can hurt him a lot. Nobody wants mm. to write about that. Yeah. Again, unfortunate thing about fan writers. They're fans. <laughs> so they don't want bad things to happen to the characters that they like anymore. Because they've seen that, because that's what happens in canon. The, you know, the characters get hurt and they go through difficulties and they overcome challenges and all that stuff and face hardship. But we like that character, so we don't want to see them hurt and go through hardship. Let's make things nice for them for once. And then that's like 90% of fan works because they all want to see it, quote unquote, for once. Mm -hmm. To the point where that's everything. The fan works wanting them to be happy and everything sunshine and rainbows actually ends up outweighing the canon works because there's just so much more <laughs> of the fan works that want everything to be nice. I mean, I don't... I mean... I think the lack of arch enemies is more noticeable in, like, manga and anime and stuff, because in Western works, I see it a lot, but... Yeah, that's that's what I was going to say, actually. It's it's just not an Eastern <clears throat> trope, basically, to have an arch enemy. You always... You move on to the next yeah. villain once the first is conquered. They don't generally stay around. That, or you have the protagonist, and then you have the anti-villain. And I hate that we bring it back to this every goddamn time. Don't but... bring up... Don't, I don't want to hear Sasuke. Don't do it. But it's valid. Uh, like I say, it is an anti-villain. You don't have the arch enemy. You have them trying to reconcile instead. Why not? That, you that might just be shown though. Why not use someone different, like I don't know, Ichigo and Dazen or someone? It's the same thing. I isn't think. It? I think the closest thing to this in Eastern storytelling is the friend turned villain or rival turned villain or whatever. Yeah. That's probably the closest thing. I mean, Ichigo, Aizen, that's not really an arch enemy thing. Not really. They kind of tried to make it one with Aizen's I planned everything bullshit. It was bullshit, though, yes. Yeah, it, it was, was bullshit. And yeah, <clears throat> so that didn't work out so well for that. But that is probably one of the closest to an arch enemy kind of situation that you get. I mean, I'm trying to think of another one, and I'm struggling. Maybe Luffy and Sakazuki, I guess, could kind of work. Isn't it Luffy and Blackbeard more than that, I would say? Either one would really work, to be honest with you. Because in either case... Their ideals are so at odds with each other that they could never become allies in any sense of the word. It just would not happen. They are just so diametrically opposed to each other. Luffy in... Luffy and Blackbeard in a very specific way between di two different thoughts as to what pirates should be. And Luffy and Sakazuki in the sense that whether pirates should exist at all. So that... Yeah, you could make an argument for both of those being arch-enemy relationships there. And I'm still struggling to find any others. Eren and Rainer Braun. The armor titan. I haven't seen far enough into... I should have really oh, I said read... spoiler there. You I? really should have said, because yes. that's not even the anime yet. Um, <clears throat> though in fairness. Edit the podcast here and make me say spoiler. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Uh. So, <laughs> Fuck you guys, audience. Yeah, Blame Guy, because he's the one that said it. He should know how lazy I am now. I don't edit for shit. Okay, um, how, how long has it been since the end of season one ended? And how long is it going to be before season two comes out? 
because I'm sure a lot of people have just given up and searched the TV Tros page like I did. Yeah, I did the same thing. Though, in fairness, you can tell that it would have been him. You really can. It looks just like him. Yeah. They're, it's they're not even so. I'm I'm not even sorry. Uh, okay, someone sorry, drumming sorry. their fingers, or is that just a sound something's making? I think that's a sound someone's making. Something's making. Okay. <clears throat> but it's not on my end because I can hear it. I can hear it too. Uh, yeah. Uh, is it me? I don't know. It's probably you. It might be. Uh, Whatever. It, it's do, fine. Do me a, do me a favor, guy. Mute your mic for a second. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. gone. <laughs> I don't, don't know where that it, sound's coming from. <laughs> no. Oh, it's all right, really. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, God. Uh. Okay. Um. What the fuck are we... I'm sorry. I've been trying to read this one paragraph from Lesson Zero for the past half an hour. Um... <laughs> Uh, I really want to read it, Ken. It's a good story. Uh, um, the fuck were we talking? Arch enemies. That's what we were talking about. How so good western books then. How can oh, this be done this well in a fic? Well, that depends. Discipl discipline to not kill your intended arch enemy off. Discipline. I... Oh, how, are you going to... how does that work, though? In a Fight in fan fiction. How it, it does, depends on if you. How are you going to explain them getting away? I've still got my mic muted, haven't I? No, you're still. Ooh, no, you're fine. Right, okay. Ooh. You gonna say something? Uh, uh, yes, I kind of forgot now. Uh, uh, yeah, it depends on if you're making your arch enemy an OC, uh, like an original character, or if you're using someone from canon. It's if you're making it an original character then it's going to be a lot harder for your readers to accept it. Even if he's a really well-thought-out character, they're going to scream self-insert at you pretty quickly. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes. If you make it very, very clear that it's not you, then you can probably get away with it. I'm going to point to Arixum's, uh Eighth the Dragoon, specifically. Uh, yeah, very clearly not a self-insert. Because holy crap. Uh, but the entirety of Ape the Dragoon is practically a conflict between Issei, the main character, and the fourth predator. Uh, I don't think it actually ever got a name beyond the vampire. So, yeah, it's basically a story start to finish where those two are at odds. And after what one does to the other, multiple times throughout the story, yeah, never going to reconcile or become allies of any type in any way, shape, or form. You, it's one of the closest I've seen to the arch-enemy relationship. So what was that bit called? Uh, Eighth, the Dragoon. Right. I'll link it if you want. <clears throat> so would you say never having them have a direct conflict would help or would that only Pro hurt you or is that maybe putting it off them? putting it off as long as possible would yeah. help well I'm arch enemy I'm thinking Sherlock and Moriarty but even in the original series Moriarty only, only appeared in two books I mean I think they only met one time actually that's yeah. more of a, a a dance than any kind of like direct conflict. Yeah, the the conflict doesn't have to be direct. They just have to oppose each other. Like as far as I'm aware, I'm not sure Okay, I know what happened in the the modern update TV show, but Moriarty was basically a puppet master in that show. Basically controlling things behind the scenes to cause problems for Sherlock Holmes and to give him puzzles to solve. 
and then Sherlock would solve those puzzles. So Moriarty would give him more puzzles to solve and do more horrible things to give him more puzzles to solve until eventually they just sort of meet and then everything goes tits up kind of thing. <clears throat> so it doesn't have to be a direct conflict, it just has to be a conflict. Like you can have a proxy war kind of thing. I think that would actually work better in the fan fiction form. Because you can, you can get more details into things. In a visual medium, you kind of you can't explain things all the time. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I'll bring it back to Batman and Joker. Those two are constantly at odds. We're aware of that. But a lot of the time, it's not just the Joker. A lot of the time, it ends up being the Joker working with such and such a person. Like, I don't know, Scarecrow, Poison Ivy, whatever. And in those cases, it ends up being... Those characters end up being four guys so Joker can get away or do something else. And then either the Joker and Batman end up facing off or the Joker gets away because, you know, they had a fall guy kind of thing. So that's a way to get around it as well. Just have them not lead from the front, basically. You don't have to have the characters, like, in the limelight, in the spotlight, whatever, just constantly right there for the audience to remember that they're there. I would say the only way you can do the arch enemy troll properly is if you have a series of escalating conflicts between them or something like that. That would help. Which, yep. yeah, it doesn't lend itself that well to fan fiction because most fan fiction writers, they want to end fights properly or think they are. They want to end fights decisively because they're so sick of watching people get away yes. at the end yeah. of it. Yeah. I think that's actually the biggest thing that holds fan fiction back for this trope and a lot of others it's like people don't like drawing things out like that but that's a problem when it comes to developing long term conflict you just can't if you're just going to end it at the first altercation like if someone has to die every time then nothing is ever going to like grow into a bigger conflict there is never going to be an increase of the stakes. The stakes are always going to be this guy versus this guy. Or this guy is doing this thing. Let's stop him. Okay, we stopped him. And that's it. You also tend to run out of villains pretty quickly if you do that. That too, like, yeah. Depending on the length of the series you're writing for, I mean, yeah. I, I guess in One Piece you'd probably be fine. There's a lot of villains in that, but... Hmm. Yeah, and also there's a lot of villains uh, turned heroes, so you could just, I don't know, maybe skip the step of them turning into a hero, and then they could die anyway. And that would turn out fine, and no one would hate you for it. You wouldn't get any kind of um, negative response from that. I'm right, guy? It would never like happen. Yeah. So what was that an indicator for? <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't even know. Okay, just goes right over his head. Okay. I'm, I'm glad it just sort of rolls over your, like, I don't know, what's the term? Some, something about ducks. Probably about the penises. I probably, I don't know. Um, no, seriously, what was that? Meaning <laughs> for? I'm confused now. Frankie, you killed Frankie. Oh right, oh yeah, him. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, okay. <laughs> so next topic is review responses so how to respond to reviews good bad and middling hmm. dead silence well, am i the only one that responds to reviews i, I mean i do so i do thinking. sometimes when i get hundred <laughs> i hate you catchy what that's a legitimate statement
<laughs> if okay, it's, response to reviews. Go on, Slicer. If it's positive or even neutral, I always just try to thank the person for it. I mean, mm-hmm. they left a nice review, so it deserves some kind of recognition. Yep. Of course, people do it Good. as guests, which is annoying as fuck, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Good, bad, or neutral, I always end the response with thanks for reading. Because, you know, they read it, so... I appreciate that much, at least, whether whether they liked it or not. Um, what was the last thing you said, Slicer? It was something that made me want to say something back. <laughs> guest reviews. Oh, I guess. Oh. Yeah. Well, was uh, all guest reviews that you want to answer back to, but can't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I ranted in this in one of my chapters at one point because a guy had left, like, six reviews... All in a guest name. I think it was Logician or something. Left like six long detailed reviews of how he didn't like such and such and such and such and such. And then, oh, he came back around because I was kind of actually being not horrible to an extent. Or at least nowhere near as bad as a lot of people are. But still kind of negative about what I was doing and giving good points about, you know, how I was being unfair and such things like that. And I wanted to respond because it, it could have been a cool discussion about that particular subject. Only he was viewing with a guest account, which means that I couldn't do shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That was unfortunate, but oh well. So how do you respond to really, really detailed but very harsh criticisms of your story? Like, for example, if somebody created all four threads just to explain how your story sucked... How would you respond to that? If someone created a story thread? A forum uh, thread. Oh, a forum thread. Sorry, yeah. Well, actually, someone did create a story thread for saying about how mine and Sam Jazz's story sucked, so that was a thing <clears throat> that happened. Um, Fun. Yeah, it was that chemical fire dude from way back in the day. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so... People creating forum threads to talk about how shit you are is basically tantamount to saying, hey, this guy's really popular, let's rag on him. If they want to say how shit you are, just fucking do it in a review. You don't need to go all the trouble. It's kind of protesting too much, so to speak. Uh, I usually actually just discuss the story with someone. Yeah. What? If they if they review, then I'll say, yeah, okay, let's talk about it. Go point by point, talk about these things that you've brought up. But if it's like a forum thread, it's like, okay, you've specifically gone out of your way to bring talk more specifically to about ha- bring more attention to and talk specifically about how you don't like my story to the point where you have a point by point analysis of my story of the things that you really don't like about it. From multiple chapters. Um, hmm. I'll argue with that. When is it worth? When do you reach the point when it's not worth replying to, to make getting into that discussion? When it's on a forum. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm not dealing with that. If you want to say something, then say something to me. I'm not going to go out of my way to troll forums to look through. You know all the things people are saying about me behind my back, which is basically what it is. I don't care. Say whatever you want. But if you have a complaint about my story and you want me to actually do something about it, then you have to say it to me. What? Alternatively, if someone leaves a review and you talk to them and they're still just being an asshole, like despite trying to be civil with them, yeah, it's not. There's no point. They're just trying to be an asshole. And vice versa. If you're trying to be civil and giving constructive commentary and the author is still just being a dickhead, then they're just a dickhead and probably not worth dealing with. We've been over this story, so I'm not going to bring it up again. But yeah. Don't worry about it. You tried to help and it didn't work. So they're lost. Um, How do you deal with good responses? Because this is actually probably a more interesting discussion. Huh. Like, like what specifically? I mean, what counts as okay, a good let, review for you? Let's start with the very, very simple. 
How do you respond to a review that says, I like this story, keep it up? I don't. I, I don't? I mean, yeah. There's, there's nothing to say to that. I mean, I'm flattered, but there's no response. Okay. And how would you respond to a review that said, I like this story, here's why. And then they list a, a bunch of things that they really liked about the story. I guess I'd just say thank you. But that's not really any... It's not really a review either. It's, I mean, it's, I appreciate it. But there's nothing there that can start a long-term discussion about it or anything. They go give some points of, yeah, you can do this better. Or here's the things that I think you might benefit from. Or here are some suggestions. Or if they ask me some questions about something that might not have been clear in the chapter that they would like me to expunge upon, yeah, I can do that. But if it's just, here's what I like about the story so far. I mean, thank you. I appreciate it. Keep reading. I'll keep writing that stuff. There's not really a whole lot you can say. If somebody Hmm. puts that much effort into it, I do try to find something to say to their points, I guess. I like mm-hmm. I explain what my mindset was or what my reasoning was behind writing one specific scene that they comment on and that's like that's just what I tried to do. Okay, I was going for a very specific thing there and it didn't it kind of backfired because apparently Guy and Kenshi like it when you're mean to them. So, uh yeah, actually. <laughs> I was kind I... kind of going for if you write in detail what you like about something then you're more likely to get a response from the author like so you can have a discussion with them and say they'll say what they were going for and things like that. You kind of just sort of sank that ship. So never mind. That's I mean, what I would do. You're more li- you're more likely to get a response out of me if you do you write something in detail. But if it's not something that I can, you know, have a good conversation with you about, as in, I mean, <clears throat> damn, what do you want from me? I just told you, and you, oh, oh well, but yeah. For me, at least, if you write a detailed review about things you like and or don't like, then I'm probably going to respond to you with something. Yeah, if not, if you just write like one line of saying, hey, this is cool, or hey, this is shit, you're not going to get anything. Yeah, okay. The author doesn't care. Yeah, you don't get hundreds. I, I try to reward effort, basically, for comments. can she? Yes? Bear with me for one second. What are you about to do? I'm scared. 1,399 reviews. They still keep coming for Game of the Year edition, okay? They haven't stopped at all. Even though I wish they they just would. But, you know. Only 1,399, that's it. For a story that hasn't (laughs) updated in how long? Three years? I'm so glad there's someone else I can do this with now. (laughs) (laughs) Two years. No, wait. 2013. Technically three years, but it's two years and a month, so we'll call it that. So, yeah. Over two years, I haven't updated it. And I'm still over a thousand reviews. And they won't leave me alone about continuing the fic. So, hmm. Maybe you shouldn't have wrote it then. You want people to bother oh, you about it. You, you oh, there are yeah. times I think that, yes. Deal with Unfortunately, it. I have this policy where if I write something and publish it, it's staying up. Yeah, that's I cannot take things down that I've written, even if they're terrible, especially if they're terrible. It's tantamount to book burning for the internet age. So, yeah. no, I don't do it. You know, what you just said reminds me of the thing I hate, people telling me to update in reviews. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it depends. If that's all they say, yeah, fuck that. But if that's they, all they if say. They leave a, yeah, if they leave a nice review, it's constructive, it's thought out, and then they end it with like, hey, I'm looking forward to seeing more, then yeah, sure, that's fine. <clears throat> no, I'm so, talking about update, please, or update now, or why aren't you yep. updating? <clears throat> yep. And what about when they private message you, asking you to update, not even on a review? You know, I've gotten, hey, update, uh, fucking reviews for Face Every Shadow. I just want to point out that story has been marked complete and has a basically I've quit this story chapter for well over a year now. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Some people just won't get the message. Uh. <clears throat> oh, well. So, 
what's the worst review that you've ever received? Uh, I okay, I have one that was like. Uh, I was actually reading a story from another author and I left a review and it wasn't even negative. The author just flipped out about it and he started posting negative reviews on all of my fix. Not like not even actual <laughs> negative ones. He's just like, fuck you. And then he, that was it. I don't, I don't even understand it. <laughs> um... I don't even remember a lot of my reviews, so I'll have to think for a minute. I don't yeah. either. One of the weirdest ones that I've ever got was that this guy. So he started out nicely enough. He, he sent me a private message with a list of questions uh, <clears throat> that he wanted me to answer. So, yeah. I, and then the list kept on coming. Eventually, it was about 3,000 words of questions about my story that he wanted me to answer. And eventually I just stopped replying because I figured he was just trolling me. So on every single chapter of my story, and on chapters of other stories, he keeps on saying, please answer the questions that I sent to you in a private message. Oh, God. You are here for my amusement. Dance, monkey. <laughs> yes. Pretty much. <sighs> uh... I'm. Hmm. I might have to bring up the fucking uh, cult guy story again for my worst review because that was fucking weird. What was that? I think I told you about it once. Um, it, I might have even told about it on the podcast. Um, so there was a review that I got on uh, Game of the Year edition, <clears throat> and. It started out as a kind of generic but detailed review on things that I'd done in the story. And I PM'd him a response like I usually do. Like, okay, this 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 was because of this and da 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 And yeah, I don't like this, but, you know, I have to go with it anyway and such things like that. Um, and it became a PM conversation that went on for quite a while and sort of at some point turned towards him giving me odd logic and theological and uh, questions like in that area. And then he started talking about how his mind had evolved to the point where he would eventually become a god. Not even joking. He, it, I looked him up and yes, this was a real thing that he was apparently trying to do. I do remember that. Yeah, that was yeah. something. Mm hmm. Yeah, so that was that actually an experience. Like a pretty fun conversation there. It was fun to a certain definition of fun. It's, what, it's something I'm not really going to forget <laughs> anytime soon, certainly. But, god damn. That was a weird guy. It's probably still in my PM archive or something like that. Probably. That stuff but, doesn't delete uh, with time, I don't think. I think they purged it at one point, but I think this came after that, so I might look it up at some point so I can post it somewhere. Uh, we should do a reading sometime of the worst reviews we've ever got. That could be fun. We would have to find them, and Kenshi, of course, would be like searching for years, reading through all of his reviews. I would actually. that he has so many of. Fuck you, Kenshi. You know, you're saying that as a, you're trying to be a dick about it, but yeah. I'll be a dick about it and say, yeah, it would take forever. Eat a dick. <laughs> okay. It wouldn't take so, long to find mine, I guess, yeah. Yeah. So if someone goes out of their way to write a detailed review, maybe throw them a bone and say something in return, like say, even if it's just like, thanks for reading, I really appreciate it, and I'm going to take your... Uh, your words to heart and actually work on these things or you know maybe bring these other things to the forefront that you liked or something like that I don't know. just be nice to the person that puts the effort in fan appreciation is always a good thing like mm. it makes people happy and you don't have to do much to do it and they're already putting forth the effort to praise you usually so I mean why not 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I can really. I've really got to find one review now. Which I've been thinking about all through this conversation. Uh, have you ever heard of like negging the pickup artist technique? Yeah. It is? You say something somewhat negative to a person to kind of shake their confidence or something yeah, along this, those lines. I re- the review I'm thinking was pretty much the fan fiction version of ne- negging. Wow. It's, yeah. Sort of a backhanded compliment thing. This is pretty good for a One Piece fic yeah. kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I, I, I got a review of... Oh yeah, I remember what he said. After rereading your fan fiction, I realized you were asking too. I was asking too much of you. Uh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, yeah, so sorry you didn't write the fucking uh, fan fiction equivalent of Shakespeare. Uh, yeah, I've really got to find that review. That was a really hilarious review, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so that's review responses. Basically, general rule: don't be a dick. I know that's the rule we bring up a lot, but it's true in life and in fan fiction. Don't be a dick. <clears throat> okay. So we have a reading this week. Uh, listeners that have been, you know, sticking with us for the past few months might remember us mentioning a certain One Piece fic a, a little while ago. Um, it was called Luffy and USS Iowa. Apparently, this fic has had a rewrite recently. <clears throat> uh, in fact, uh, from what Guy's been telling us, it is actually the second rewrite that this fic has uh, undergone. So, um, I think it would be a treat if we all stopped and enjoyed this wonderful, this what this wonderful piece of work together. Yes, I'm glad you agree. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't persuade you from this, so I mean, sure. And he's. He linked he linked it with aplomb. Like, do you hear that thud? That was him linking it just now. Him hitting enter. <laughs> he took the potato <laughs> chip and ate it, basically. I just have a really loud keyboard, but yes, I like the narrative of that. <laughs> so, uh, so, this is the second rewrite of Luffy and the USS Iowa. Revision, as this particular one is called. <clears throat> to read the summary... Uh, Luffy disappears early in his life, but he returns and he has a ship like no other. Luffy is about to turn the world of One Piece upside down with his ship called the Iowa. Luffy will kind of have a harem, and he will receive new crew crew members. Luffy is smart and not dumb. (laughs) Finish it. This, this, This story is similar to my story, USS Iowa, and One Piece, but changed a bit. See, it's he's he's gonna be smart and not dumb, guys. Awesome. <laughs> Come on, we can't make too much fun of him, please. Okay, okay. Yeah. Why can't we make too much fun Eventually of him? Eventually it just gets mean. It's like kicking a puppy. <laughs> kicking a puppy should get me should be mean after the first time you do it. Like Okay, so, if I may, chapter one, Luffy returns. Ace, Luna, wait up! If you're wondering who Luna is, that's all you get. (laughs) (laughs) Hurry up, Luffy, Ace yells as Luna giggles. Ace, Luna, Luffy yells, jumping out of a tree. Boom! The thunder cracks with lightning dancing across the stormy sky. Luffy wakes up from the thunder. Ace, Luna. Luffy whispers as he sits up in his bed in his quarters. Yeah, that's, um... Luffy's dialogue has basically been the words Ace, Luna several times, and that's about all that's... 
Are we really getting a walkthrough commentary of it after every sentence here? Not after every sentence. I just want to... Can we... Can we just acknowledge that maybe this this story might have been a little bit more tolerable if he'd actually bothered to acknowledge any of the changes he'd made? I'm just going to say that at the top of this because by the bottom of it, you're probably going to understand what I mean. <clears throat> anyway. Luffy looks at the picture frame on the nightstand with him, Ace, Sabo, and Luna when he was younger nine years ago. Luffy is now 15 and is sitting on his bed looking at the picture. He gets up and gets dressed by putting on black pants followed by a red button-up shirt, then a black tie. He then puts on his black boots. He picks up his shoulder holsters, which has two ACP-45s, then a hip holster that has a 44 Magnum revolver. Luffy leaves his quarters and wakes up, walks up a few flights of stairs. He walks into a room with 15 people in it. Admiral on the bridge, a sailor says, and they all salute. At ease, Luffy says. Everyone returns to their posts. Morning, sir, a sailor says. Morning, Gunther. How is Radar? Luffy asks. Radar is good, sir. No contacts for the past three hours, Gunther says, as Luffy looks at the reports from last night's watch. Good, and the fleet, Luffy asks. No problems with the fleet. We are on schedule and on course for the Somalia Sea. Good to hear, Luffy comments. The ship that Luffy is on and captain of is the battleship Iowa, which is an Iowa-class battleship. We have a class? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Luffy owns the ship since he bought the old warship. People think that he works for the United States Navy, but he does not. I'm pretty sure that's like a federal, federal crime. Yes, it is. You can't uh, just buy... That's not how that works. Mm. <laughs> <clears throat> he is a pirate, but not like pirates today. He is paid to fight the pirates by the shipping companies so they do not lose ships and employees as hostages. There is a name for that too. It's called a privateer. You probably should have researched this a little bit. Uh, the Iowa is sailing towards the Horn of Africa with the fleet that consists of 100 ships. Holy shit. Okay. I forgot, um... I forgot about that bit. <clears throat> Why are all 100 in... ships going to the Horn of Africa? Why are Good all... question, if you were <laughs> expecting an answer for it. They want a holiday. They're all going on vacation, you know, just chill. They run into a storm that appears to be normal, or at least the crews think. A lightning bolt strikes the Iowa, making everyone on board pass out. Luffy comes to 10 minutes later and sees no storm. Everyone starts to come to, and they start checking each other over. How is the fleet, Luffy asks. Sir, the fleet is neither on radar nor responding to the radio, a sailor says. Two hours go by and still no word from the fleet. Admiral, Admiral, we have a contact on radar. It is ten miles to the west, Escobar says. Very multicultural ship that he's running here, just want to say. Okay, head for the contact. We do our job till we can unite with the fleet. Yes, sir, the crew says. The Iowa starts sailing, etc. They shoot a ship. <clears throat> I'm skipping ahead a little bit because this is incredibly dry. Uh, I know where we are, Luffy says, and all look at him. Where, sir? Gunther asks. This is the world I came from, Luffy says, shocking them. Really, sir? Gunther asks. Yes, this is, Luffy says. You can feel the emotion. Um, he tells them how he vanished when he was younger and now he has returned. Okay, um... Do you want to tell us how he <laughs> you tell us how you vanished and returned? The Iowa sails to an island, but drops anchor in a cove on the other side of the island so it is not seen. I will be back. I'm going to check on the town. May I come, sir? Gunther asks. Sure you can come, Gunther. There's no way Gunther, Gunther. Gunther. Gunther is the most interesting character in this story so far. I just want to put that out. That's not a high bar, but he's credit to him. <clears throat> the two leave the ship using a small boat with a motor, and they drive it up onto the beach and walk to the town. Luffy and Gunther walk into the town and walk into a bar called Patty's Bar. But the two didn't notice the name. The two walk in and everyone inside looks at the two. Luffy and Gunther look around for a minute, but before they could take a step, Luffy gets tackled to the ground. Gunther goes for his gun, but stops when he sees that it is a girl with green hair crying into Luffy's chest. <laughs> Lucifer, is it really you? What? That's not a typo, just I, to let you know. I guess he has a full name now, and that's his full name. <laughs> Are you sure that's not a typo? I thought it was. It's not a typo, uh. trust me. It's brought up again, so it's not a typo. 
Hello, mother. It's good to see you again, Luffy says with a teary smile as he wraps his arms around her as she continues to cry. Luffy helps Makino to her feet a, mo- a minute later, who is still crying, happy to see her son, who everyone thought was dead. Huh? I mentioned about the changes that go completely unexplained. <clears throat> If you were expecting an explanation for this change to canon. Luffy, a man asks, shocked. (laughs) Hey, Shanks, Luffy says as Shanks walks up and hugs Luffy. We thought that you were dead, Makino says, still hugging Luffy. Where have you been, Shanks asks. I vanished to another world, but I am back, Luffy says. Ah, the emotion. Mm. It gets you right there. Luffy, who is this, Yasop asks. This is one of my crew members, Luffy says. My name is Gunther, Gunther says. (laughs) <laughs> hey shanks i have a question for you luffy says what is it luffy shanks asks can my crew and i sail with and trade on to you luffy asks how many are in your crew 1500 crew members and i have a ship though luffy says surprising at the size of his crew i was about to make a compensating joke but i'm, I'm gonna rise above it uh sure shanks asks <clears throat> Everyone starts to party, and Luffy accidentally knocks a box over, spilling its contents onto the plate of fruit next to Luffy. Luffy closes the box and hands it back to Shanks. Shanks, what's in the box? This has two devil fruits in it. Shanks says. He sees that Luffy seems to be choking. Lucifer. <clears throat> Lu- Lucifer. Are you okay? Makino asks. <laughs> I, I said it, it wasn't a typo. Yeah. Those two apples had really bad taste. I think that they may have been bad. Apples? That plate doesn't have apples, only oranges, Makino says. Shanks opens the box and pales. Luffy, those weren't apples. Those were two devil fruits. Shanks says, horrifying everyone, including Luffy and the readers who are so sick of the fucking two devil fruit trope. Makino's hands cover her mouth as she stares at her son. What? Luffy screams. You ate two. No one's eaten two before. Bullshit. We know people have eaten two before. What kind were they? One was the Mizunomi and the other one was the Yami Nomi. The Mizunomi lets you control water at will and the Yami Nomi lets you control the darkness. But since you are both, there is no telling what your weakness is or even if you have one. Because you may be the strongest person ever now in the first chapter. Really? All see Luffy's hand turn to water. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Aren't you reading a long slicer? No, I'm trying not to spoil myself. <clears throat> all see Luffy's hand turn to water, then to a black mist, which shocks all. Well, only one way to find out, Luffy says as he walks towards the door. He walks out of the bar and heads for the docks, followed by everyone from the bar to see what happens. <sighs> Wait, the is he going to drown himself? Well. What, the, what is his <laughs> plan here? <laughs> And the author's note at the end of the chapter, because it's important to have them at the end of the chapter so you don't, you know, front load the thing with explanations. I guess this is the exception to the rule, where maybe a little bit of explanation up front might have been beneficial. Like, who Luna is, or why his name is Lucifer, or how Makino is his mum, or two devil fruits, or Mizunomi, which is... You're kicking the puppy now. Come on. Um, no, these are literally things we talk about every week, okay? This is, this, these are things we don't, we shouldn't even have to talk about, for how obvious they are. Okay, the relationship of Ace and Luna will be by blood, so Ace is Luffy's older brother by blood, as well as his sister. Huh? That's not... Ace is both Luffy's brother and sister at the same time. Apparently. <laughs> and they're it's not, a very and Luffy, open family. And, I'm, I don't. I don't even know what's. Uh... With Sabo, it will be like canon, like how Ace and Luffy did. Sabo is not really Luffy's brother, but Ace and Luna are his older siblings. <clears throat> so apparently, Gold Roger is also Luffy's dad in this. Gold Roger slinging dick. Apparently, either that or Makino and uh, what was her name. Port Gas something something uh, had a very interesting relationship and went for that whole pseudoscience bullshit female to female pregnancy thing. Yeah. It's One Piece. They probably have science that lets you do that. It wouldn't surprise probably. me. Cyborgs and shit. They could do it. Honestly, why not? 
Uh, I yeah. About Gunther. I think Gunther is brilliant. I know, right? Such Completely an interesting unflapped. character. He was unflappable. He didn't even react with the whole devil fruit thing. Like, what's a devil fruit? No, I don't need to know. It's not important. It's cool. <laughs> like, I'm down with Gunther. Gunther gives no fucks about anything ever, and I love it. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Uh, da da. Yeah, Luffy can swim. Surprise, surprise. <clears throat> Of course he can. Mm-hmm. So, now for the real also, fun Also, it immediately shows that he has hockey. Of course. And everyone comments on it. Hey, that's hockey. For the really fun uh, part, do you want to read the reviews? Oh, no, I really don't, because I know what they're going to say, and it's going to be terrible. <laughs> Damn you, God, why'd you make me do this? I don't want to. <laughs> Great chapter, update soon. Sweet. <laughs> Magnificent chapter. Can't wait for more. Please update soon. Great chapter. Update soon. Please continue Please. making more chapters. Okay, there are only like literally three reviewers, so I'm starting to think this is like a con job or something. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, half the guys have said, said the exact same thing for all the chapters, haven't they? Yeah. I can't... It's like the same two, uh, It's like... <laughs> sweet, sweet job. Awesome, sweet, <laughs> awesome. Love the story. Keep up the good work. Keep on surprising me. Well, it is surprising, in fairness. <laughs> in a in a sense, I suppose. What surprised you? None of this was surprising. Luna. Who the fuck is Luna? <laughs> okay, one surprise. Is it the one from Harry Potter? Or... Also, Luffy's apparently the devil. Didn't know that either. That was surprising too. I'm just interested in how would, uh... he bought the battleship. I mean, seriously, where did he go to get that battleship? That's a good question. He would have had to have been operating on like real world rules. So how did he not only afford a battleship, but manage to purchase one and get an like a hundred ships? He has a hundred ships at fifteen years old. That's just kind of confusing. Yeah, we're just stamping on this puppy now. Don't. We did not have to go this deep to like try and unravel this story, (laughs) but there's like it's like an onion. There's layers, okay? There's really not. There's of all the things you can say to this, there's is not one of them. There are absolutely no layers on this. There are layers of how bad it is, okay? No. That's what this is. Yes. This is just... No, it's not that deep. You can never look at this story and say, yep, this is deep. <laughs> uh... So, yeah. That was the second revision of that story. The second. Um, I'm kind of scared to see what the first one looked like. I wonder if the first one's still on his profile. It is. Of course it is. It's about Phil. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yep, there it is. USS Iowa and One Piece. Should we? No. 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 No, I don't want to. Chapter one. I don't want to. I don't want to. Stop it. June 20th, 2020. God damn it. Location, Hawaii. Why is he the host of the call? We can't kick him. The, fuck the battleship oh, USS the Iowa flagship of the Pacific Fleet disembarking from Pearl Harbor, Hawaii into San Francisco, California. Admiral you Phil D. You guys just want to go away and make our own podcast without him. It might be easier. With blackjack and hookers. Is in command of the fleet and is the youngest admiral in, in United States Navy history at the age of 17. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. What's his name? Because I thought it sounded like Phil D's nuts is what it sounded like when you said it. Phil D. Young. Oh. <clears throat> he is very intelligent and good with strategies and is underway. What? Underway of what? What's he, what's, what's I... underway? Is he an event? Is he an event? <laughs> Not a person? <laughs> He's hip and happening is what he is. He's happening right now. 
<laughs> Apparently. <clears throat> Hansel, so hot right now. Hansel. <laughs> Damn it, <laughs> you made me think of Zoolander. Good. I don't think that's a bad thing. It's not, but I'm trying to focus so I can like screw with you guys. Uh, the Pacific Fleet is two days into its journey across the Pacific Ocean. Uh, Admiral Young's orders the fleet to break off and to continue through the storm. Halfway through, the weather report comes in, and Admiral Young does not like it. No, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Admiral Young says to the XO, I have never seen a storm like this or seen in any books. The XO asks, oh, he doesn't even get a name. I miss Gunther. I can see why he named him. Yeah. Also, this is in script. You're not supposed to do script on fan fiction, just telling you that much. I can see why he rewrote it. Yeah, this was the important part to rewrite. Yeah. Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, continue full speed ahead so that we can hurry through this storm. Aye, sir. All engines full ahead. Aye, aye, all ahead. Ah, the black flag method of dealing with storm <laughs> 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 Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> well, the storms are the fun part, that's why. Uh, the Iowa has sailed for ten minutes and the storm has taken a turn for the worse. Radio check from all ships. This is a communication check with all ships. We copy radio check. We copy. USS Missouri, we copy. We copy. Through. Lightning strikes the Iowa. All instrument panels spark with glass breaking. That was all in, like, a side action asterisk things that you use for sound effects. I didn't so, know there was a sound effect for that. I thought there was like a series of sound effects. No, it's just one sound effect, apparently. Well, <clears throat> damn, that's a really specific sound effect that someone recorded. <laughs> yeah. Ad Young, along with the crew, pass out from the lightning strike. He's the first to come to blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> uh, da, da, da. Ba, ba, ba. Oh my god, there is so much fucking military jargon bullshit that no one cares about. Please stop. <laughs> to his credit, I can't, I can't... he's writing stories about something that he enjoys. He's obviously yeah. interested in this thing. And who are we to judge? It's fan fiction. Gotta... He can do what I'll, he wants. I'll give him credit. A lot of this is probably accurate to military jargon. No one reading the story. Almost no one reading the story is actually caring about military jargon. No, uh, really. Well, maybe the, the right people aren't reading the story then. This was posted on. I mean, there must be some fan fiction. Uh, maybe they should try that? out space battles. I'm sure they'd enjoy that kind <laughs> of shit. Ah, uh, yeah, they probably would. Yeah, they they probably really would. I'm 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 not even really joking about that. Um. Oh God, more fucking script. Stop reading it. I'm a worse person for having heard this all. Yeah, okay. Okay, and then they figure out that they're in one piece and stuff happens. No one cares. Literally no one cares. Like, this is not even interesting to read because it's bad. This is just... the Also in script. I'm not going to stop harping on that. Don't write script in perfection. Uh, actually, I like that this one hasn't actually got any reviews. It's four chapters, absolutely no reviews. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that before, actually. Normally yeah. something... Actually, it's four chapters and two rewrites, so no one was even curious <laughs> to look back at the original versions of what that story looked like. I'm sure they did, they just didn't say anything. Hmm. I mean, it's favorited and followed by five people. So, can you get like the names of those five people? I want to shame them. No, this so... may be going a little bit too far, but so only the author has that information. No, no you can't do it. You could, if you wanted to search through every uh, profile out there, you could find the two five favorites. Probably, but that's a lot of work being mean to someone. Um... <laughs> Okay, that's enough of that. That leave the puppy alone. That was so. If you're going to make changes to canon, <clears throat> just going to throw this in here right at the end. Either explain it up front, because people are going to bitch about it. 
like we did. Or make it make sense in the story. One or the other. Pick one. But don't do neither, because neither just it makes you look work. stupid. It clearly it makes does you not look work. <sighs> okay. Your readers your reader should not feel lost, but and if okay, if they do, they should be asking questions because that means they're interested. If they're not asking questions and are just lost, then they don't care. They, they will leave. Especially in the first line of dialogue. Yeah. Like, Exposition is a thing. You should <clears throat> probably use more of it. <sighs> Goddamn beige prose. It became the fanfiction style of choice for so long, people just do it now. I shouldn't be complaining, because I use it all the fucking time. But, dragon, there's a limit to how far you can take that shit. Um, Alright, so, recommendations. Let's talk about good fix, shall we? Shall we? Someone say something good about a good fic. <clears throat> uh, I I haven't read any good ones recently. <laughs> Guy, help me out here. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to find my recommendations. I've got a, some. Uh, uh, if you need to fill the air, I actually have my worst and most baffling reviews up. Oh, God. Okay, if you want to go... Go for it. Right. Uh, for truth is the worst one. <clears throat> uh, that's the the portal one that I wrote that I wrote before I even knew anything about the main character. I thought they were just some mute Asian, basically. Yeah. And it's understandable. Uh, by Renato, it says, "Congratulations! I have I had seen much, and I mean much better better fanfics than yours. Period. This is something a fifth grader can write. Period. <laughs> Next time, try a little or better." Uh, back at you, buddy. Yeah. And for uh, my first fic, the free manga shop or whatever, mm -hmm. I just got one person that reviewed every chapter called Sekere Forever, and they said, I'm a fan who has a request. And then in all capital letters, it says, somebody write a fan fiction with a female Sekure OC, but let her beat me out of Sekure. I'll be in your debt if you do this. Nine times. What? What? Why? Why? I don't get it either. So, did he give you any details on this OC, or just... No. That, that was the entire review. Nine no. times. He, want, he wants you to freeball it. He doesn't care what kind of OC it is, as long as it's an OC. So, basically, like Sekure, just hates the entire cast. Uh. Apparently. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've just found that's a really bad review that I was uh, talking about. The, the, one of the best, worst reviews I've ever received. After rereading your One Piece fic, I realized I was asking too much of you. You're not Kenshi618 or any other hotshot fan. <laughs> what? They you're... Made me. <laughs> yes, they did. They did. And you're still new to the game, and I've set high expectations for you. I am truly sorry. Without the, with, that, with that out the way, I want to tell you I came up with a new system of how Logia Devil Fruit Awakening should work. And yeah, blah, blah, blah. He describes his own idea on turning Buffy into a giant muscled anime demon and says, however, uh, next paragraph, however, my only problem with your fic is Sai, your grammar. And I want to point this out. He spells grammar with an E. And trying my goddamn wow. best not to drop the story because of the incorrect words and weird sentences. Sentences with an apostrophe at the end. Man, it's... <laughs> because the sentences <laughs> possess things. Man, it's annoying. Whenever you have time, please rewrite all the chapters and it will attract potential fans too. You need to proofread all of your future chapters before you post them. Not to sound like a jackass, but, but you, you... if. But you, if haven't improved your grammar before you post any new chapters. One more thing before I go. Could you please increase the words of upcoming chapters to 50,000? I know that sounds good. <laughs> <scary. laughs> <laughs> but that would mean more, the more fans and can understand what's happened in, in the story without vague 
the information you post in in your chapters. That's why I said all that stuff was I love story and I want to see it flourish like drifting and out boxes. This story has so much potential and I hope you will take this message. Um, I, I hope you won't take this message and it's an insult to your story. Fat man. Um, 50,000 words. I, I have a few things to talk about and I don't know which order I want to start with. So I'll just start I'm with gonna the I'm going to start with the 50,000 words. Yeah. If I'm that's gonna, okay. It's like, I hate, like, I'm going to, I'm about to drop your fucking story, but write a whole lot more of it. <laughs> I See, I've read a story that has 50,000 word chapters. 50, that was, yeah, I have too. That was very unpleasant. I've read a story. Yeah. <laughs> it's not great. I don't know why no. anyone would want to do that. But it's not uh, cool. And do you do you want to know my uh, reply to that one? What? You, my, mind, your message really made me laugh. I'm still not whether I'm meant to be laughing or not, but I'm debating whether this message is actually some <laughs> cre- incredibly clever form of meta commentary on fa- fan fiction comments or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not either, to be honest. Kind of right there with you. Yeah. <laughs> My second concern that I wanted to bring up. You neglected to mention the first time you talked about this review that I was directly referenced in I this actu- review. <laughs> I actually forgot about that one, to be honest. I would have yeah. been looking forward to hearing about it a lot more if I knew that I was in it somehow. <laughs> well, that's why it's a surprise, you see. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. In, like in, I said, in the in the third thing, by grammar, does he mean yeah. the way you spell certain words like favorite? Yes, that's why I pointed out to him as well. I'm British. I spell it the British way, and that's what what he was. Oh, I think that was what. Good. Was... <sighs> Your people are stupid. <laughs> now, I don't spell yeah. favorite the way you spell favorite, but I understand why you spell it the way you spell it. Because it's the right way to spell it. Mm-hmm. It's obviously. <laughs> oh god okay so I apparently recommended holding all the cards already <laughs> so I'm going to look up uh, something else okay you know it's, it's uh, funny I actually <clears throat> read a few DXD crossovers well, a mm-hmm. fusion fix kind of like that with the cards, yeah. and that seems like a kind of a, tr- a common thing, that he gets the class cards. Hmm. Didn't know that. There was actually one fic that mocked that, because the old guy, Zalrich, whatever, showed up and uh, offered the cards, and uh, Issei's just like, nah, fuck that. I don't want them. And so he got something else. Hmm. Again, didn't know that. Okay, apparently that's a common trope, but I don't care. It worked for that story, so it's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, my recommendation is Fate Recondite or Recondite. I'm not sure how to pronounce that word. It's not one I've actually read ever. Um, so it's a Fate Stay Night and Ruby crossover. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, it's been a little while since I've read this, so bear with me. Basically, uh, Shiro goes into the Grail with Gilgamesh in the uh, Heaven's Feel route. That's the really bad one where everyone dies, right? Well, where Bro, Ilya probably. dies. I don't know. Yeah. That one. So he goes into the Grail and everything's miserable and then pops out on Remnant, the uh, Ruby setting. Uh basically ends up in a spy security expert role for uh, Beacon Academy. And hijinks ensue. He takes on the role of a custodian or janitor in joke. Um, So he works as a janitor for the Academy and points out all the security holes to Ozpin and deals with uh, threats inside the school and interacts with the main cast during all this happening. What it does, it surprisingly has a a good idea of how annoying teenagers can be. (laughs) 
like the entire cast of Ruby, like all of the both teams, Ruby and Juniper, are kind of annoying in how you just want to punch them sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I can agree with that. So it portrays that pretty damn well. Like, there is an entire arc where both teams think Shiro is a double agent working for somebody and has infiltrated the school. So they basically lay a trap to capture and or kill him. Wow. Yeah. It starts off capture... And then kind of veers off into kill as the fight goes on because because they're teenagers like and everything that. is because... dramatic and about them basically yeah kind of yeah a little bit of that too so it's pretty cool how it does all of that it makes it the characters feel a little bit more real than they did in the show because the shows are like I don't know an hour and a half per season give or take not a lot of time for character development. So it actually does a bit of that in this uh, fic, and it's very much appreciated. <clears throat> no. Not appreciated? Or agreeing that they don't get much development? Slicer really has some lag going on, apparently. So, yeah, um... Right. I'm sorry. So yeah, that's my recommendation. It is currently 54,000 words, give or take, in seven chapters. Uh, started in January of last year, last updated in October of last year. So, you know, it may or may not still be active, <clears throat> but it's worth a look even so for as far as it's gone. Even for as far as it's gone, which isn't very far, it's a pretty good series. So give it a look. Uh, anyone else got any recommendations? Uh, I do. Uh... <laughs> You know, I actually have three recommendations, but I think I won't do two of them, and I'll leave them for next week. Might as well, and I'll just give the one which I really like. It is Good. a Naruto and Bleach crossover. It's called The Spiral of Descent. It's 30,000 words, and it's complete, but it's a really good story. Okay, So link, please. Uh, all right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, linked. So it's it's pretty much uh, Naruto dies. Uh, it just really descri uh, describe how he dies. At first, he dies and he that's a really good premise. Mm -hmm. Like I don't even need to know anymore. And he, but you should probably tell us more. And he goes on and becomes a hollow, basically. And yeah, that's how it crosses over Naruto and Bleach. It's, it merges the un two universes quite well, and Naruto goes around and he uh, meets Dale, and he, it's. Kinda goes into a lot of angst stuff, saying, "Oh, I want to die. I'm a monster," sort of thing. But it does it quite well. It does actually explain his character quite a bit. It, this good characterization in it, and yeah, it's a well-written story. I mean, it's thirty thousand words, but he got it more in five chapters, like a decent plot. Then it could have taken a worse writer about 200,000 words just to get through it, and they wouldn't have done it half as well. So it's quite very well written. And, yeah, it's... Yeah, I don't really know... I don't actually want to say any more on that, because it's just... That pretty much summarises it. It's a very short read, but it's a good read. So... Okay. Yeah, if... I think I might have read that one before, actually. If I have, I'd definitely recommend that one as well. Okay. Yeah, I do like the pace that he set. It gets through a lot, and it gets through well. Okay, good stuff. Um, no time wasted is basically <laughs> yeah. the way it sounds. Yeah. <clears throat> Can you got anything? Not this week. Nope, okay. All right, so we're pretty much done for this week. Uh, so I would like to thank everybody for <laughs> Patreon. Are you watching YouTube? YouTube. Once again, I'll... bye now. Are you going to edit that, or did you seriously just end the podcast that way? No, it's gonna. That's how it's. It. That's how it's ending. Right. Uh, bye. I, I guess. Uh, yeah. Um. Bye. So wait, is this part still in the podcast, or have you stopped? No, this is still going. Uh, <laughs> Well, I never know when it ends or not. You're making more clear. 
No, I think this I think this works pretty well, to be honest with you. Fuck's yeah. sake. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So should so, I end it now or? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you should end it now. Come on.